Hello and a warm welcome to our latest video. In today's discussion, we'll be exploring the exciting subject of the nutrient cycle, which is also referred to as the material cycle or the biogeochemical cycle. So, let's start by exploring the concept of matter. What exactly do we mean when we refer to matter? Additionally, what constitutes a nutrient? Let's delve into these questions. All organisms, from viruses, bacteria, plants, and animals, to man, are composed of matter. Matter is made of elements. Organisms require about 40 elements for their growth and life processes. The masses of all organisms are, therefore, made of matter. The dominant constituents of this matter are hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen. Nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, sulfur, iron, and magnesium are also among most principal elements required by organisms. The cells of all organisms are made up primarily of six major elements that occur in similar proportions in all life forms. These elements, hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur, form the core protoplasm of organisms, and the first four of these elements make up about 99% of the mass of most cells. These bioelements combine with one another to form a wide variety of chemical compounds. They occur in organisms in higher proportions than they do in the environment because organisms capture them, concentrate and combine them in various ways in their cells, and release them during metabolism and death, and go to the environment So, all organisms are made up of matter or nutrients. These nutrients or matter are either present in our abiotic environment, soil, water, and air, or in living organisms. And they keep on circulating from organisms to the soil, water, and air, and back to the organism. These cycles are called biogeochemical cycles. Why are they called biogeochemical cycles? Bio means living organisms, and geo means rocks, soil, etc. Nutrients or matter are chemical elements or a chemical compound. These chemicals keep circulating between the bio component and the geo component of the ecosystem. So, the cycle is also known as the biogeochemical cycle. Nutrient cycles can be broadly categorized into two main types, based on the pathways through which nutrients move, gaseous cycles and sedimentary cycles. Gaseous cycles involve the movement of nutrients primarily through the atmosphere in gaseous forms. Nutrients are taken up by organisms, released back into the atmosphere through various processes, and then may be taken up again by other organisms. Examples, carbon cycle, nitrogen cycle, etc. Sedimentary cycles involve the movement of nutrients primarily through the Earth's crust, soil, and water bodies. These cycles typically have a significant sediment or rock component, where nutrients are stored for long periods before being released, through weathering and erosion. The major sedimentary cycles include the phosphorus cycle and the sulfur cycle. In the next video, we'll talk a lot about the carbon cycle and really understand how it works. Thank you.